century, who came to my town and warned our people in Poland about the coming Holocaust. He told them what to do, how to save themselves, how to save the most precious things that they possessed, their children and their grandchildren. But like in the past, they didn't listen to him. They laughed at him. They called him crazy. They threw rotten eggs at him. As long as I will live, I will never forget the last words of this messenger of God. And that day will come when you will say that I was right. But I am afraid. It will be too late. His name was Zev Jabotinsky, the teacher of Menachem Begin. Two years later, September 1939, it was too late. criticizing me for stealing up the past. They say this is not Germany. We don't need a Holocaust Museum. Today, it's July the 12th, 1982. I'm standing on Roosevelt Boulevard. See for yourself if we need our people to remind them what happened in the past. And to remember that it can happen in the future if we will do nothing. See for yourself, what do you see? In and around Philadelphia alone, swastikas have been found everywhere on public buildings, in all kinds of businesses, on bus stops, phone booths, in restrooms, even hospitals. There are more swastikas springing up now than ever before in this country. Yaakov Riz receives many letters from people who have visited the museum. However, he receives many hate letters from organizations such as the American Nazi Party and the KKK threatening his life and the lives of his family. Yet this man goes on teaching and educating people from all walks of life about the Holocaust and how he is fighting to prevent another Holocaust from happening in America.
Jacob Riz and Stella Yellen were both born in Poland. Although they never met during the Nazi and Russian invasions, their paths would cross somewhere in the future as educators. Jacob and Stella's story is special as it represents both sides of the Holocaust and is something I believe every survivor, liberator, and educator can relate to in some way. If there is indeed a representative example for those times in history, the lessons we can learn from the eyes of these two witnesses will help everyone to see a clearer picture of what they experienced. Jacob Riz founded what has turned out to be the very first Holocaust Museum in the United States that was open to the public. His was a journey that planted the seeds of an embryonic museum that grew out of a basement and the home he shared with his family in Northeast Philadelphia. Stella Yellen, on the other hand, never spoke of those days that she and her mother spent in the concentration camps. It wasn't until the mid-80s that she was prompted to finally take a stand and refute what the deniers were saying about the Holocaust being made up and that it never happened. Stella became an educator and traveled to schools meeting the students and telling them firsthand of what happened to her family. Jacob also became an educator and was a principal of the Workman's School where he taught Hebrew. His final years were filled with teaching and defending the idea that the Holocaust was far from over. During the period that he traveled around the city, he discovered swastikas and other anti-Semitic signs of hate. The original basement museum no longer exists. However, the filmmaker has preserved the photos, films, and related archives, and is soon to complete the third phase of a project with the documentary titled Jacob's Basement. The following excerpts are taken from the 1982 film My Promise to God, the first of the series. The Original Basement Museum filmmaker, I have had the opportunity of working with the late Jacob Riz, who was the founder of America's first Holocaust Museum and the seed for the many that have followed. I've had an opportunity to work with survivors, liberators, and educators 
who have dedicated their life to teaching people about the Holocaust and that it really did happen. Each survivor, liberator, and educator represents thousands of such people that are dedicated around the world to teaching the Holocaust. I find this experience something that words do not fit, but pictures do. Mm-hmm.